we are, to a large degree, functioning energetically, emotionally. Our emotional waves are going sometimes miles and miles, hundreds of miles, depending on how, you know, the state that we're in. Our mental waves. And a lot of times when we go into the mental plane, we're traveling. We're into the emotional plane. You can sense that you're traveling to, to some kind of environment, some kind of reality that is an alteration of this physical one that we were conditioned to experience and to believe in. You know, the solidity of these walls and the floor. When, you know, science now is telling us that there's more space here than there is solid mass. And if you go further into quantum physics, actually, there is no solid mass. It's just that we've decided to make it so. Now, that's hard to believe, you know. And a lot of people would say, well, you're nuts. You know, it's clearly solid, even though physics has proven otherwise, like real hardcore scientific information that there's more by far quantumly, more space here than matter. And even the matter is an illusion of the senses, like past and future. So this is the apparatus that goes beyond the concept of that. That's what I'm saying. We have the concept, and some of the researchers and the quantum physicists were able to take a leap into that understanding and bring it back from that journey into concept books, and we can read that and say, oh, I can get that kind of, it's abstract. It's paradoxical. But they're saying that reality is paradoxical. It is not linear. Time is not linear. But then we try to create systems that are linear. We try to live by principles that are linear. And there is the conflict between reality and the friction that we create by trying to force a delusion on top of that reality. Anyway, maybe someday we'll look back at it and say, well, that was fun. <laughs> but right now, it's sometimes not so much fun for people. And if we take a look at how it's playing out right now on this planet, a lot of people are not having fun with that. But there is a doorway opening, you know, as consciousness opening. And what I'm saying is that this is the apparatus to not only talk about that and conceptualize it, but to actually have the experience of it, of the paradoxical reality, and how we can actually have a dimension of existence there, and that we're transforming toward that. We're in a transitional period from the physical density to a vibrational society, to a vibrational plane, and that's where we will have our so-called living. One of the things with all this that I'm saying that vibrations, psychic forces, emotional debris that's floating around everywhere, telepathic information, not only from other human beings, but the animal world, the plant world, and other planes is becoming available to us. And we have to be selective about what we're allowing to permeate. Now, we can just apply that to immediate things like what happens when you go in a train station or airport. There's all that commotion going on, and you've sensitized yourself, and it drains you. It makes you feel not well. So there you can understand that if I'm going into like a dense environment like that with all this confusion, all this possible negativity, I need to be less permeable. That's the point. And that there is a now new choice that you can make is to adjust your permeability to your circumstance. And this is a skill and a possibility that we're acquiring through so-called evolution. And simultaneously, the possibility to experience this paradoxical nonlinear dimension. All right, so we're regulating the membrane. Just like when we were kids, we learned how to, you know, look both ways, not to put our hand on the fire. And now, you know, when we step into a certain environment and we know that, look, we're working to be more sensitive, working to be more in a higher state of awareness. But with that comes certain other challenges. And that's what we're trying to learn how to recognize, learn how to regulate so that we can maintain well-being.
Because if not, then we, we're not well. And I have clients and I have friends that will tell me, you know, I'm not feeling well. I don't know why. I should be feeling great. I should be really happy. And then, you know, when they, take, they examine it, it's that they're really, really not paying attention to the forces around them. And they're absorbing a lot of what's going on that really they don't need to. We have the selective permeability. Even go into like a, a family where some family members are negative. Some family me members are, you know, dominating. Being able to actually interact with m almost anyone and be able to, you know, allow the, the, the positive part or the empowering part or the connecting part, that, but then also have the selective permeability that what you don't want to absorb, you don't absorb. You know, it's just a, a function of the membrane.